Greetings, greetings, greetings. Today is the inaugural first National New Orleans Voodoo Day here in the beloved, enchanted, legendary, historic city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Right now, the participants are making a bit of a symbolic journey from the ports at the river where the slaves would have been disembarked. Middle passage average more than 60 days in thousands parish from causes ranges from malnutrition, scurvy, and other diseases to the violent suppression on board rebellious ships. Those who did survive were often unloaded here along the banks of the Mississippi River. In 1808, the United States banned the international slave trade, though illegal shipment of Africans to Louisiana continued, with the last documented slave ship, the Phoenix, arriving in New Orleans in 1830. This marker was commissioned by the New Orleans Committee to erect markers on the slave trade, and I honor them for doing that. I shake. Yeah, This land need a lot of reciprocity, and we are asking the guards to continue to walk with us so we can learn the ways, we can teach the ways, and we can heal ourselves. I say, I say, move on to the French market. There was no good slave master. Sure. There is no good plantation. They're all death camps. What happened is two very horrific things. One is that they started capturing and stealing free people like Solomon Northrop and shipping them down here, actually stealing people who had been set free. Solomon Northup, 12 years a slave, located in the Fort Ford Marigny, from the corner of Esplanade Avenue and Chart Street, extending to Carolek Street, is the former site of the Theophilus Freeman's notorious slave pen, demolished after the Civil War, where Solomon Northup, a free man of color from New York, was sold into slavery in 1841. And it took him over a decade to get back to his family. What's worse than that is they set up breeding camps. Breeding human beings so a young girl at the second menses of her life would be put in a breeding camp and raped to produce babies to be sold in the domestic slave trade. She was raped till her body gave out and she could no longer produce. These are the horrors of the domestic slave trade. So once you got here, you have never been safe. And so I declare these spirits free. We are going to heal this land. We're gonna recognize and we're gonna repair and give, and give healing to these spirits and these people who were never safe on this land. Ashe. 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 And I think what's important not to only honor his memory is to remember that he survived all of that and he did get back with his family. So even though there might be a rainy day, we have that Aida Wedo rainbow coming through to us, don't we? Right on, Ashe. So we're gonna pour the offering and I just wanna say thank you again for everybody who made this day possible. Greetings, everyone. I am Voodoo Chief, the Divine Prince. This is our ancestral tree. Some say this tree is between six and 700 years old. So even before the enslaved population were allowed to gather here on Sundays to drum, to dance, to feed themselves, this space was already sacred ground. The indigenous population celebrated corn festivals 
on this ground. So it is indeed sacred. It is indeed a spot that we continue to honor our ancestors. If you brought flowers, offerings, liquor, anything for the ancestors, you'll have an opportunity to come up uh, individually if you would like and speak your wishes into the tree, pray to your ancestors, call on those who came before you. The one thing all of us in this group have in common is ancestors. We all had someone who came before us, our great mothers and before us, our great fathers. And it is on those shoulders that we all stand. It doesn't mean that some of us don't have complicated relationships with our relatives and certainly some of those who passed on. But there are indeed those in your bloodline who stand up to support you, to defend you, to protect you, to bring correction to those things that maybe have happened in the past, to bring balance to those generational curses. I ask my ancestors every day for peace, peace in my own heart, my own mind, my own life, but certainly peace in the world. There's a lot of warring going on right now over ideology, religion. We all have an obligation to do what we can do within our sacred spaces. And the first and foremost thing I offer is to call on your ancestors. Our ancestors are our front line of defense. This is not just voodoo. Certainly we've always known that the dead and the ancestors never leave us. But science now supports us that ancestral memory survives in the blood. So often our, our sense of flavor, hot, cold, spicy, sweet, is often fueled by our ancestral memory, even before our earthly experience with a particular thing. So our ancestors are our frontline defense. They're there with us in every human endeavor. And I offer you to connect with them, to share with them, to invite them in, and to do so here at the tree.